<clears throat> hey people, what's up? It's Jamil. And man, I got some allergies this morning. But uh I wanna talk a little bit about the gang stocking program <sighs> and uh everything about okay, my strategies, right? Like one of my strategies I was using was uh what I call you know, grinding through the program. You approach somebody who's a gang stalker, you tell them who you are, you tell them your name, you tell them everything about you. A lot of times I just give them a flyer. Um I tell them, I just start off, I tell them I'm famous, you know, and they, I did like, I did a bunch of interviews in Hollywood, got set up to be killed, beat that, get went through your gang song and beat that, and now I'm out here helping people beat it, and I'd always approach people, no matter who they were, sometimes, like when I was in Phoenix, sometimes they'd have a, a, anything from old people to gangbangers to police to whoever, and I would just sit there and just, and just rap with them no matter what, no matter who they were, you know, if you, you show me respect, I show you respect, I just sit there and I talk to them, we grind it out, you know, and, uh, the cool thing about it was, was it worked. It became effective, and I got it off watching the gangs. When I, was, when I used to grow, I used to, when I, was, <clears throat> I used to be in Chicago a lot when I was younger, you know. And uh, my father, we have a lot of family in Chicago and stuff. My mother lived there at one point um, when she was younger. So on both sides of my family, people are familiar with Chicago. And so when I was growing up, I remember you know visiting family, visiting relatives, stuff. And there was a certain area where there was gangs, and in Chicago, like Chicago is the type of place. Where even in like even in, in like suburban white areas there's gangs in Hispanic areas there's gangs in black areas there's gangs. anywhere you go in Chicago it's a lot like L A it just that's how it happens and when I was younger I used to watch these people and I used to watch them confront each other and like bang on each other you know and I used to think wow that's interesting man he's gonna get his ass whooped just cause just cause his hat is one way to the next you know what I mean it, it was kind of it was kind of funny it was like it wasn't funny that the person got hurt but it was funny that you know that much can happen over nothing, over just somebody's hat, the way they wear their hat. And so, when the gang stalking actually happened, I, I said, wait, wait a minute, gangs, gang stalking, huh? And so even though gang stalking isn't, doesn't have anything to do with street gangs, it still was interesting. And so I used that formula, and then after that, um, recently, in the last few weeks, I said, you know what, well, if, if the gang thing works, what about pimping? Can pimping work? And now growing up, um... A lot of people, I don't know, a lot of people don't know, I had did a couple interviews a long time ago with, with somebody in L.A., and I was telling them a little bit of my father. My father was born in 1939, and he was born in Jackson, Mississippi, so he grew up in the 40s and the 50s, so he grew up, you know, way back when, and he went to the Marine Corps um, when he was 17, and at that time, you know, you didn't need a, a GED or a high school diploma to go to the Marine Corps. This was 1956, so, you know, this is this is like a little bit after the Korean War, but right before, a little bit after the Korean War, and a little bit before Vietnam, and this was a time where you didn't need any of that, you know, if, if you were, if you were able to just be able to, to, to run and stuff, and you could have good eyesight, and you could count and, and read a little bit, that was good enough, and so he went to the Marine Corps, and after the Marine Corps, he ended up with a woman, at the time, who was, um, the a woman who, who was Miss Black America, at that time in America, you had there was no just Miss America. You had Miss America, then you had Miss Black America. There was still segregation. And so he ended up with her, and then she told him that she didn't want him to uh, work. She didn't want him to work a regular job. And he was, he was younger than her. And so, and this is in California. He had made his way out to California. And so he's like, what do you mean? You don't want me to work? And so she, she's hustling Johns. She's, she's basically hustling tricks out of a lot of money, you know, talking about a lot of money. And so he's just like, in his mind, he's just like, damn, okay, okay, you don't want me to work, okay. And so he sees that, and then he goes out, and then he he's, he starts pimping females and stuff. And now you got to remember, this is back in like the late 50s, you no, know, the late, late 50s, like 59, 60, 61. I mean, this is before Kennedy even got killed. This, this is way back in the day when uh, things just things worked a lot different than they do today. And so he was able to conduct that activity. Then he did that through the 60s, then the 70s. Then when the 80s came, you know, he had stopped. Um, and at that point, at that point, what you would call the pimp game ended. It ended in the 80s with the emergence of crack cocaine. Crack cocaine, just a lot of those women turn into crackheads, and a crackhead will do anything for $10. So instead of a woman making a $100 or a couple hundred dollars or three, $400 or sometimes even $1,000, somebody could give her some crack to give him some head or something, you know what I mean? And so, and so he met my mother, but him and my mother were married before I was born. 
it wasn't that type of situation where you know where he he, he you know they I, I was like a planned child and everything so um at that point at that point my father slowed down and then he ended up dying when I was about five right and so he you know I think a fast life leads to you know a fast death he could have lived a lot longer but he drank a lot of alcohol and all that stuff and I think his you know him doing all that stuff in his past you know, caught up with him. He smoked a lot of cigarettes and stuff like that. And so, anyway, growing up, I was around a lot of people who were older, who had been extremely associated with the pimp game, the real pimp game. You know, the real pimps out of Chicago who were at the Players Ball. We're, we're talking about back in, like, the early 60s, mid-60s, late 60s, early 70s, you know. And uh, so, I'm thinking, that, you know, I, growing up, I, I don't, I look at this stuff, and these guys are kind of funny. They look kind of like clowns, like the way they dress. And I'm thinking, I'm like, how are these guys, how, how the hell are they out here pimping these, how the hell are they doing this? And so I had an uncle, and, and when you see these guys' pictures, you see old pictures of them, like gator shoes and nice Cadillacs and nice rings, stuff like that. And I'm like, man, he, I'm like, man, they're out here really doing this stuff. And so I'm in the car with, with my uncle and his friend, and they're rolling down the street. And th now there's a female, and now and okay now this is Chicago. There's a female, and she's already out there hoeing for another pimp. And my uncle's like, my uncle's like, I'm gonna be able to get her. And I'm thinking, I'm like, how the hell are you gonna be able to get her? And you know she's a hoe and she, and she has somebody she's hoeing for. You know I, I'm like, you know what I mean I don't understand. You know I'm younger. I'm just watching this stuff. And he starts talking to her, and now you gotta remember. This this is in the '90s when it it already was over with, like the big era of the pimp and hoe thing was already over with. But because you still had a lot of older people around who were there, that in their mind it's still going on. And so he's like he's like talking to her and stuff like that. And now she's not supposed to look at him because she already knew by looking at him, he, you know, he, he was on he was on some pimping. And so she's not focused on him. And and he's all like he's all like yeah you know you. you I see you out there. He's he just talking to her. He's just shooting game at her, and she's walking. He's like, look, look, your your, your feet. You know, you dropped something. You got something. Look, I'm trying to show you. You dropped some money on your shoe. Look, look. And she and she and she and she bends down. She looks at him, and then she bends down, and then and he's all and, and he's all like, yeah, you know, why why you're out here looking at me, messing around? You could have been getting some money. See, you're you're listening to me. I'm, I know who your I know who your uh I know who your old man is. You're, I know who your man is. I'm gonna go back and tell him, and he's gonna end up whooping your ass or something. You might as well just come with me because I'm about to go out of town. You can just give me what you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he ended up pepping her. I'm like, God damn. I'm like, you did that? And I was like, so she gave him some money and, and, and she came inside the car. And I'm like, I'm like, you, I'm like, how did you do that? And he's like, and he's, and he's all like, you know, and so, and so as, as time goes on, I'm starting to see, man, these guys are some, uh, these guys are some master manipulators, you know? And uh, so I, I'm out, I'm out there peeping the scene, checking all stuff out. And so now the gang stalking hits me. I'm like, you know what? I beat the program, but can I pimp the program? You know what I mean? Can I pimp the pro? Can I turn the program out? And it, it worked. It fucking worked. I I, I had I, I manipulated the program, and I had the program putting females like they put females out with tight pants and shit on, so I could look at them and stuff like that. And you know how you know how women in the program walk on a track. They walk on the whole stroll of the track. I live in a cul-de-sac, and I manipulate to the program through the program be putting females on the track. They be putting them in sexy clothes and having to walk and stuff like that. I'm like, God damn, I pimped the program. I pimped the fucking program. And so, not only that with Jamil Rawls, not only do you learn how to beat the program, but you learn how to pimp the program. We pimped the we. We pimped on the program, boy. We pimped the program. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, for people just tuning in, listen to Jimmy Ross. Fuck beating the program. We're going to show you how to pimp the program. We're going to show you how to pimp this bitch, boy. Pimp the program. That's what, that's what, so, so, so not only do you beat the program, you pimp the program with Jamil Ross.